cannot run Crysis. This catchphrase has become so widespread because back in 2007 Crytek decided to push the limits of PC gaming by making the most advanced and demanding game at the time. DirectX 10, 85,000 shaders, advanced physics and post-processing effects, all the stuff at 4K resolution still can easily make suffer even most of the modern hardware. And let's be honest, it's not just because it still looks good 10 years after the original release date, but also because it was a kind of a technical mess, and it clearly shows now. I've played Crisis recently, so in this video I'm going to talk about its standalone expansion that released in 2008 and was called Crisis Warhead. And problems start right from the beginning. At first I couldn't even launch the game at all, because the DRM system was complaining about the inability to connect to the license server. Isn't that great that EA never bothered to remove this shitty protection, and now you have to think about how to run the game you legally bought? It's a single player game, multiplayer called Crisis Force, and it's a separate exe file, yet you need online check to play a single player game. That's ridiculous. Anyway, after searching for the solution, I find out that Steam is trying to launch exe file from bin32 folder, but there are separate 64-bit executable files in bin64, and when I tried to launch them, it finally worked. But that meant no Steam overlay and playtime counters, so what I did is simply renamed bin64 to bin32 folder, and then also just in case renamed crisis64 to just crisis. And after that I could start the game through the Steam and use overlay. But that's not all. Apparently game has 60 FPS lock and the only way to remove it is to switch from DirectX 10 version to DirectX 9 by adding DX9 command line argument. Well, it's not like it's easy to run this game at frame rate beyond 60, especially at 4K resolution, but I decided to go all in and set every possible graphic setting from gamer to enthusiast level. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Are you serious? Oh my god, it's real. They named graphics option like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that's so stupid, what the hell were they thinking? I can't say for sure, but I don't remember such cringe stuff in settings in the original Crisis, so they probably changed it in Warhead, but why? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Oh well, okay, back to the game. Outside crazy naming, settings overall are fine, but stuff like field of view and anisotropic filtering are missing. And once I finished watching that poorly aged pre rendered intro cinematic, game crashed. <laughs> Fucking hell. That crash reminded me that intro logos in this game can't be skipped, so be sure to go to the folder where you installed the game, then go to raw game, localized video pass, and remove every file that starts with trailer word. Second attempt to launch the game went slightly better, level finally loaded, and it was 30 FPS average. Yeah, that didn't feel smooth at all. And when I tried to switch all the graphic settings to minimal quality, Game crashed again. Maximum game. After that, I decided to try and switch from DirectX 10 version to DX9, as I mentioned before, and that actually helped a lot. No crashes after that, and I managed to reach 60 FPS on maximum settings in 4K, though I had to lower anti-aliasing because uh, looks like it affects the performance the most. Hooray guys, we can finally run Crisis! Was it worth the trouble? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, I finished this game back in 2008 and it was okay, but I can't say it aged particularly well. It looks good and holy shit at those details on the level. Nacho looks great and there is even animals like birds and spiders that have their own AI and you can pick them up and throw right into the enemy's faces. But the gameplay and story are kinda uneven, especially the story. Cutscenes and level transitions are really strange, I'm not sure if Crisis Warhead events happened before or after or even during the original game. Stuff happens, people talk on the radio, now we see aeroplanes, look at those explosions, oh shit, that looks bad, wait, why we are in jungles and when did the rain start? I honestly have no idea what's going on in this game. Gameplay looks open, but in reality it still consists a bunch of linear jungles with a few open areas. Shooting is good, but sometimes it's getting hard to follow what the game expects you to do. 
Should I try to sneak on the enemy base and get explosives, or it's impossible to do stealthy and reinforcements will arrive in any case? At least they seemingly rebalance nanosuit abilities, so there is more energy to actually use them. So, in conclusion, Crisis Warhead ends up exactly how I remember it was back in 2008. Beautiful looking technical mess with a bad story and uneven gameplay. If you are going to play Crisis Warhead on modern hardware, prepare to deal with broken DRM and other technical issues. Hard to tell if I'll make a review on this game, so I'll just say that if you are not afraid of some manual fixing, because EA and Crytek are incompetent assholes, then Crisis Warhead might interest you with its unique sandbox shooter gameplay. There is no guarantee that you will like it because of its open and unpredictable nature, but it's worth giving it a shot.